In today's video from Rapid TCT 2022, we're stopping by the E3D booth and talking about something a little revolutionary. We're also going to be taking a look at a machine that prints multicolored objects with resin and they're safe to handle directly out of the printer, and also printing with diamonds. Can you do it? Well, Diamondback can. I hope you learned something new today, so let's get started. Okay, Revos, Revos. There are more colors here yeah, than, yeah. than you currently have out and different materials. Uh, so let's print the rainbow. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the next we've got coming out is a 0.15 mil nozzle. So we've had that out for, for the V6 for a few years. We're kind of extending it out to, to Revo. Um, okay. So you, yeah, things like this here, uh, tiny little print, um, kind of taking on SLA in terms of like- Oh, wow. Right? That is, okay. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is what you currently have. Uh, yeah, there's... And then you're here. you're adding this. Yeah, that, I guess that one would go there. Go there. So then, what are these? What are these? Yeah, what are um, these? So, uh, another thing we're working on is, is high flow. Um, so, similar how, to, how V6 has Volcano, but for high flow, we want to do the same thing for Revo as well. Okay. So we got here are a 1mm, a 1.2, and a 1.4. Okay. Um, we're hoping to do some kind of cool stuff and keep the overall length the same, but it's still achieve higher flow rates. Okay. Um, so you know, the benefit of that is you don't have to like change set offsets or uh, move your part through all the time, but you would have to do it if it's longer. Um, yeah, so those are kind of uh, on, uh, in development at the moment, and probably Q3 this year we'll have okay. those out on the market. Now, the high flows, will it, so these are, these are just larger nozzle sizes. The, um, are they, is there anything different on the inside of these? The, yeah, the, the aim is to have some different stuff on the inside that it helps achieve that. Okay, so flow. but on these ones right here, these are just regular nozzles with a bigger diameter? Yeah, okay. The main, these are just okay. Main, main so these are bigger nozzles that they'll have available, but the high flows, so that means you won't have to change your existing... Uh, I'm grab this. So the heat sink and the heater core are the same? Yep. So just a nozzle swap to go to high flow now? Yeah, exactly. Oh! Um, that's well, yeah, that's the plan. Um, we're also going to be doing a uh, high temperature version as well. Um, okay. You know, people want to print above 300 degrees, so things like your, your peaks, your all temps, and all that jazz, um, that'll be coming later in the year as well. Okay. Um, the next one we're, we're really excited about is uh, obsidian. Um, so, copper out of the nozzle, uh, and then a hardened steel uh, insert in the tip. Okay. And so, we're putting wear resistance just where we need it. Um, Heat cost down, but also you get the, the benefit of having copper and the high conductivity as well. Okay. So you, uh, quite often we see with hard steel type nozzles, you have to bump your temperatures up by degrees, something like that, okay. to account for low conductivity of the material. With obsidian, we're, we're going to do away with that by having the, the copper. Okay, and then. So it's it's a type of steel, but there's a coating on it too, right? Yeah, right. Um, it's a, a DLC we've been working on for the coating manufacturer, so DLC diamond light coating. So we basically covered the outside of the nozzle in nano okay. diamonds. Um, diamonds famously very very hard, so adds yet more to the abrasion resistance. And um, it's also very non-stiff as well. And um, so particularly with filled materials where you have um, all the fibers that want to try and make little boogers and things like that uh, in your print, it helps. Okay. As well. okay, so do you know when those will be available? Are you able to say, or are we uh, still waiting on that? I don't want to disappoint people and give a hard timeline, but we're you know we're, we're done in terms of the development. Um, okay, so it's just so it's production scale up at this point. So okay. the next few months or so. Awesome. Cool. And then uh, anything else coming in the future uh, down the pipe yeah. that you could share? Uh, it's a small one, but it's um, it's quite a nice like, quality of life uh, improvement. So this is Hamera XS, so we've uh, done some optimization on the motor. Um, so this will still have the same, um, more or less the same torque output as the original one, but we shaved about 20 mil off the motor. Okay, motor, nice. About 100 grams, so it's about 25% lighter. Nice. Yeah. And the extruder itself is the same, still yeah, dual exactly gear. Yeah, same gear train, um, okay. all that jazz, and designed to take Revo as well. Okay. Um, that should be out on the 7th of June, so... Um, oh, time. nice. Let me put this back. Yeah, it's a bit of a brain teaser lap because it's got a... Yeah, you can, can live there. There we go. Awesome, thank you. Well done. Ooh, ah. There you go. That's all we're looking for. So what do you guys do? Um, so we, color, obviously. We manufacture the machines. Okay, you're manufacturing? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this is our smaller unit. 
Uh, this is like a bench top version. It's 20 by, or sorry, 8 by 8 by 3 inches. And then we have an industrial version that's 20 by 20 by 12. Okay. And what is it printing with? Is that, re is that, oh, it is, so it is resin. Okay. Yeah. So is it the same type of resin you would find in like an MSLA printer or is it a different? Uh, different? Closer to what you find in like a Polyjet. Okay, so it's okay. Except more colors, cooler, cheaper. That is cool. Yeah. Was that all done at once? It was. That is insane. And this was one single piece? Uh, or this, part, this part's wood, oh, yeah, but the yeah. rest of it, yes. Yeah. One piece, one print, color, shape, everything happens at the same time. That is nuts. That's cool. Yeah. Never seen one of these machines actually in action, so. Yeah. Printing live here at the shop. Cool. So just, it, it's liquid, so obviously the layer isn't too high, because it's Got to solidify it pretty much as soon as it leaves the nozzle, yeah, right? Yeah, so we, we do uh, UV curing in both directions. There's a flattening roller. Okay. So this machine does uh, 30 micron layer thickness. Okay. Our big machine goes down to 19 micron. In. Yep. Okay. Very fine. Thickness. And then when it comes out, does it have to go through an additional curing? Or is uh, it no cured? No additional curing that we dissolve away water soluble support material. Okay. And then we're ready to go. Okay, so is it safe to touch when it comes out of this yep. machine? Okay, that's good. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, you're very welcome. Hey guys. Yeah, enjoy the show. Harris. Hey. Taylor. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet in person. You. How you doing? Doing great. Got the. Got, I saw your uh, your camera system here. You got set up on your post there. Oh sorry. yeah. I, I did not want to lug around a tripod, <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw a GoPro and just record everything and see what I can figure out after. That works. Everything. That works. Uh, how's it going? It's this is fun. You're getting a lot of excitement today. Yeah. So. You know what? I running one in my one, my one machine that I run all the exotic stuff on, uh -huh. and you're making it very hard to do a video because it just works and I have nothing else to say. <laughs> like I guess that's a good thing to say, yeah. but it's Thanks it's me. It's, it's like how do you make content? Yeah, it's, gonna, it's like okay, yeah, I feed yeah, it this yeah. filament and it prints it fine. I feed it this filament, it prints it fine. I I, I ran like two spools of CFP ETG through it for some rep uh -huh. and it printed fine. Like. Yeah, it just works. We got a few out here. Like this is this this was done on a Mark Forge with their onyx material. This is an iron embedded filament. So it's got iron particulate. So is it magnetic? Like if you. So it would be, yeah. It would. Or be. if you put it in salt water, it start to rust. Oh, that's like, cool. It's kind of some cool exotic filaments out there. Should be really good. That text is clean. What machine was this on? So this one I actually outsourced. I sent the guy a nozzle, just like you sent yep. a nozzle. I said, here's material, here's a nozzle, and then I bought the print from it to get that, that text to get the came out. Cord. That came out clean. Yeah. Come on here, you got to try the ice test while you're here. Oh, yeah. Did you do it with your disc? I haven't played with the kit yet because I, I want to record it. I don't want to scratch it. So maybe I don't do it. I got to keep you on the suspense, but you have the steel disc? Uh, <laughs> okay, so here you got all your yeah. material samples. So here's the steel. Yep. What most people are going to yeah, go to. Yeah, put it in. So just kind of fill it. it. It melts a bit, yeah. Just noticing your finger. Like, this is when you can't, you can't even record this, right? You got to experience it. I could turn the time lapse on. <laughs> But you, you gotta yeah. feel it in your hand. So there's a solid piece of diamond. Oh jeez. You just feel that instant. Yeah, the heat transfer. Heat just, transfer. So what does that mean? What does that mean with the nozzle? Well, that means the tip's always gonna be at the temperature of your heat block, right? Because as as the filament extrudes and pulls yeah. that energy out, it's just gonna replenish yeah, gonna it quickly, work. reduce your clogging, have better consistency of your print too throughout. So. Now for the the tip itself, so that, it, what is it? A sintered diamond, or how do you? The sintered Polycrystalline diamond. Okay, so, so it's, it's sintered. This is a scaled down press. This is typically about nine feet tall. Okay. And so what it is, is that diamond disc was put in here. We, there's a resistive heater that takes it up, you know, really high temperatures, over a million PSI. Okay. And that's how the, the diamond disc is uh, centered together. Okay. And then how is it embedded in, because the rest of the nozzle is just brass, right? The rest of it's just a brass body. And, and how does it fit in there? So so we've, we've, got, we've developed a process where we essentially swage it, crimp it in. Okay. And that's the retention mechanism on so this So there's design. a positive stop in both, so it's not going to fall out. No. Like, yeah. I remember the ruby nozzles back in the day, that was it. So, so I mean, yeah, people complain about the ruby, like ruby breaking. Also, 
the other thing is the neck right there under the hex yep. uh, shear off yep. during installation. But this one, it's the same thickness here in the back as it is there. Like we didn't reduce it with a. So I, I don't want to cut mine in half, but how far up does the diamond part go? Like is it. Because you know you got the, the taper at it's the bottom. It's about 100,000. So it's about 100,000. Okay. Tenth, tenth of an inch. Okay. And that's where the critical part is because that's where the heat's getting stuck yeah. right and out. All, all of the reduction of the filament is in diamond. Okay. So, so, so the brass is a straight bore, it's yes. diamond, and then it tapers down within the diamond side. Okay. So you have no risk of wearing out the brass during the, that initial. If you think about the, the velocity of the plastic being extruded, you know, you got the velocity of it, it's a lot higher at the tip yeah. amorphous, but all of that's within the diamond. Okay. Where it accelerates up. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else can I show you here. Cool. Uh, so, so we've been in the diamond business for over forty years. Yeah, because I go on your website. You're, you're like other big other things. We keep losing this stuff. Here we go. Here's one. So, like, so the base here. This is tungsten carbide. Yep. And that's diamond on the top. It's typically used for oil drilling. Yep. Cutters. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So same type of diamonds in, in the nozzles here. Okay. So this is this was your what you guys started with. Exactly. And now you're moving into 3D printer nozzles. Okay. Yep. Here's another application. This is a bearing. So oh. Diamond, diamond on diamond. The coefficient of friction is better than Teflon. Oh, geez. And you don't need a lubricant uh, at all. Yeah, it's not sealed. It's open. So, uh, you know, there was one application where they were wearing out their bearings, and they put one in, and it's been running like for nine years now. Oh, geez. And you don't need to do any maintenance. It's not like graphite or anything like that. Where no, no. And I, what's interesting is when you run the diamond on the diamond, it's a well, it's not. There's gonna be wear, right? Yeah. It does wear, but what happens is they actually polish each other. So it just gets smoother. So it gets smoother. <laughs> so it reduces the friction. I mean, that, that's how we process the diamond. That's how we get the polish. It's diamond on diamond. On diamond is yeah, well, yeah, it's yeah. diamond. What else is going to scratch it? Yeah. Yeah, these are, like, like I got in the one machine, and it's just, I played with all the novels. It just... Do you run it in one of your Voron systems? Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got it in the, uh, I don't have any video, because I just got a new phone, so I don't have any pictures, but I got it in my, uh, I have one machine I built a while, it's a V1.8, that is, I built it specifically for higher temp stuff, and, a, and um, abrasives, like, it, it's my not normal material yeah, machine. Yeah. So I, I have it in there, I've done some wood fill with it. I've done a bunch of CF stuff. I got a bunch of glass filled that, okay. I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna print soon with I did it. some Kevlar embedded. I haven't played with day. Kevlar yet. I haven't had a chance, but. I mean, it's, it's done with the nylon. I mean, yes. the nylon base material, similar yeah. to the, but it, Yeah, it's interesting. We got uh, Volcano you know, compatible. Oh, oh, nice. It'll be coming soon. This is a Ultimaker compatible. Okay. So, you know, and down the line, we'll, we'll add on some high temperature. You'll probably see like the Ultim around here and yeah. things like that. So address that yeah. higher temperature application. That'll cool. be coming out. So you use diamond. Yeah. yeah. No, it's been super fun. So far, the show's been great. So I need a sticker to put on my machine. Let's do it. Yeah, this is the first time I've done, come to a show like this, so I'm like, this is all new to me. So I'm like, I can't, they did it at uh, Chicago in September. I had an invite to that, um, LDO Motors, like, they do Voron kits, so it was, uh -huh. it was good. But um, at the time, the pandemic, I couldn't cross the border. Oh, I would have had to quarantine on the way back. And it would not worth the asking. Because I live literally 45 minutes from here. Okay. Uh, like, I'm right across the border, so, yeah. Cool. Cool. It was good to talk to you. Yeah, nice to meet you in person. Stay up. Take care. Enjoy Take care. Show.